from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A new variant of COVID causing a lot of concern in foreign nations. What health officials say makes this variant much different than previous ones and why they are on high alert. And the Christmas magic is coming to San Antonio tonight. Details on the annual Christmas parade and tree lighting. That's just ahead. Good morning and happy Black Friday. 8.58 this morning, 48 degrees out. I'm saying under 50, cold. I'm saying under 65, <laughs> cold. But hey, I'll, I'll take it and I kind of like the clouds. Mike, Mike Osterhage joining mm. us this morning. Mike. Yeah. Justin is with family and uh, celebrating a long Thanksgiving weekend. And you're yeah, with family too, Mike. Yeah, my family's in town too. We had a beautiful. I was talking about us, but that's fun. We had a beautiful. <laughs> Do what? So I was talking about us. He We're family. He was talking uh, yes. about us. Yes, hurts, family right. time over there. Anyway, um, it is a beautiful day. Now, it, it is chilly out there, but the nice thing is, look at the bottom number. Dew points at 27 right now, so the air is very dry, so it's not that, like, sneak down the back of your neck kind of damp chill. Although, with the breeze, we do have a bit of a wind chill to deal with, and we're going to be up to um, 59 later on this afternoon. That'll be about it. The aquifer did go up four-tenths of a foot, and the allergens haven't gotten the updated count as of yet, but this was from uh, yesterday's reading. There was a whole big shopping list of allergens all on the light side. Now, as far as uh, the wind out there and wind chill temperatures, we have temperatures in the 40s right now. Again, the air is very, very dry, and so it's, you know, doesn't have that damp chill, but with that wind out there, we have wind chill readings down in the low 40s, and we are going to be staying on the cool side today and then tomorrow. That's going to be a damp, kind of a wet day. More on the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. All right, thank you, Mike. Taking a quick look out at the roadways. A lot of people out and about this morning. There's a 90, it's 36. People are hitting the roads. People are coming back from a lot of Thanksgiving travel. Maybe you're out headed to the stores. Oh, look at that. Yeah, no. Six and four there. and Spurs Ranch. Of course, when I say it's busy, we see no people on the road. But if you are out and about, make sure to be smart, drive safe. Me, the only place I really traveled to was the kitchen, had the leftovers. This guy went into the kitchen every break during early show and then a minute after the <laughs> show. We have a lot of leftovers here. She throws shade, but later in the morning, I see her just walking down the, hey, the I, aisles I, with a whole crate. One meal. Mm. Eight meals. Okay. All right, we're going to take a look at today's 9 at 9. Starting today, no flights in or out of South Africa are allowed to travel to Europe. Officials in South Africa, they're reporting a new COVID-19 variant that scientists say is more contagious than the Delta variant. More than 20 cases have already been reported there. COVID surge is not just a problem overseas. 35 states have reported an increase in daily cases of 10% or more in the last two weeks, with hospitalizations climbing in nearly half the country. Stock markets are open again today after the Thanksgiving break. Traders casting a wary eye on new pandemic restrictions imposed in Europe over a surge of new COVID infections. Black Friday, the unofficial start of the holiday shopping season, brings hope and worries. Businesses are counting on shoppers to splurge, making up for 20 months of pandemic losses. But with supply chain issues like a shortage of shipping containers and truckers and bottlenecks at ports may put a damper on sales. A new record set this Thanksgiving for the most air travelers since the pandemic started. The TSA screened more than 2 million people on Wednesday alone. That's more than twice the number of people screened the day before Thanksgiving last year. The TSA expects to screen more than 20 million people for the entire week of Thanksgiving. Several popular body sprays are being recalled due to concerns about a possible cancer-causing chemical. 18 versions of the spray are included in the recall because they contain benzene. The FDA says customers should stop using the spray and contact Old Spice to get your money back. Gap says supply chain issues are to blame for $300 million in lost sales in their third quarter. The retailer says COVID-19 led to factory closures and backlogs at ports. Gap says they're bracing for losses of up to $350 million in sales throughout the holiday season, all due to continued supply chain delays. This could be the last Black Friday ever for two of America's most famous retail brands, Sears and Kmart. In the beginning, there were over 3,500 stores combined, but now only 21 Sears and just six Kmarts still exist in the U.S. JCPenney could be next. The company has filed for bankruptcy. 
about two and a half million people on hand for the big return of Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York. Last year, because of the pandemic, it was a TV only event with no giant balloons or festive floats, but that was not the case this year. Six new balloons making their debut, and that's today's 9 and 9. Well, San Antonio Police Department is investigating an overnight shooting at a home on the city's east side, and we know at least one person is dead. Jonathan Cotto has been covering the story throughout the morning, he joins us live. So, Jonathan, what do we know right now? Max Arabo, police are telling us it was a gathering inside the home directly behind me where a heated argument uh, developed that led up to that shooting. Now, police are still trying to determine the suspects from the victims, but this is what we know so far. Police responded to the 6,000 block of Bear Branch. That's on the city's east side around midnight. They say a man believed to be in his 40s was found shot dead, and there were two other adults with gunshot wounds as well. I have ages of a female being late teens, maybe 20 years of age, 18 to 20 years of age, having sustained uh, multiple gunshot wounds to her body. And then a male in his mid to late 50s also sustaining a uh, non-critical uh, gunshot wound. Now, police say detectives are talking to witnesses to learn exactly what led up to the gunfire and determine suspects and victims involved in this deadly gunfire. Now, both adults were taken to the hospital, but that woman involved in this case is said to be in critical condition. Now, this shooting is under investigation, but police tell us witnesses are cooperating. Reporting live from the city's east side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. We're following a lot of other crimes throughout the morning. San Antonio police searching for a man accused of shooting another person at a home, at a mobile home park early this morning. That's right. It happened on the city's southeast side early this morning. This was a scene at a mobile home park in the 5300 block of South Cross Ranch Road. That's not far from Loop 410 and New Sulphur, Sulphur Springs Road. Police say officers arrived to find a 43 year old man shot inside a mobile home. Now the search is on for the gunman. It's unclear what led up to the shooting and another shooting we are covering uh, waiting to learn the name of the man who was killed during a Thanksgiving gathering. It all happened during a drive by shooting this one on the city's northeast side. So one man was killed and three other people were hurt. The shooting happened last night around 8 o'clock at a home in the 4000 block of Sunrise Creek Drive. Police tell us when officers arrived, they found a 28 year old man inside a home dead. Another man was taken to the hospital in critical condition and two other women were also hit by that gunfire. Witnesses told investigators the shooting was a drive by shooting. The search is still on for that shooter as well. Now that Thanksgiving has come and gone, it's all about Christmas. Happening today is the HEB Christmas tree lighting ceremony. It's a San Antonio tradition in Travis Park. Some people will experience it for the first time. Christmas in San Antonio, it's something that we've just always wanted to do just because we know that it's a tradition and it involves the river, the lights, and just a lot of activity. Well, the full the night will be full of activities like ice skating and holiday music. Be sure to pack some warm clothes as well. The tree lighting happens tonight just before 630. So make sure to get to downtown early so you can find a parking spot and don't forget the warm clothing. And San Antonio is so amazing during the holiday season. Happening tonight, the 40th annual Ford Holiday River Parade. This year's theme, 40 Years of Magic. It kicks off at 6 this evening. Illuminated floats will go along the one-hour parade round. The event also going to be broadcast live at the Arneson River Theater starting at 7 p.m. You're going to see more than 20 specially designed floats, including Santa's sleigh, Hanukkah decorations, the state of Texas, and Get this, even a Willy Wonka float. We have all the ticket information, what you need to know before you head down to the Riverwalk. Just head to KSAT.com. It's officially Christmas, Mac. It, almost. So <laughs> close. Mike Oster H has the whole Christmas. Santa! Yes. 907, <laughs> 49 degrees out. We'll still head in GMSA at 9. And it is the time of giving. The Community for Life Foundation was founded to make a difference locally and across the world, helping students in and around the San Antonio area. The executive director will be joining us live to discuss the mission, its accomplishments, and how you can help out.
Hi, I'm David Sears, and I just wanted to take a moment and let you know what I'm thankful for this holiday season. First off, I'm thankful for my wife and my family. I'm also thankful for the men and women who serve our country, who are willing to lay down their lives so we can have the freedom that we have to enjoy our friends and family. I'm thankful for the first responders. Most of all, I'm thankful for God allowing me to be in this country and live in the greatest country on earth. And as you gather with your friends and family, I hope that you'll take a moment and just reflect on what you're thankful for this holiday season. Welcome back in your morning headlines and new details on a new variant of COVID and Thanksgiving disappointment for dozens over there in California. And will the United States Postal Service be able to keep up this holiday season? Those stories are in just a, in just a second. But first, we start with that new COVID-19 variant. It's made its way into Israel. Health officials are calling it the B11529 coronavirus variant. Israel has responded by banning travel from seven African nations, including South Africa, where the variant is thought to have originated. People from those nations are no longer allowed into Israel and nationals returning home, they must quarantine at a hotel until they have tested negative for COVID-19 twice. Now, two other people in Israel are also suspected of carrying the new virus. All three have been vaccinated. Scientists don't know much about the new variant yet, but it contains more mutations than expected. This COVID-19 variant discovered in South Africa is worrying scientists. They say because of the many mutations, more than 30 in the spike protein of the virus, uh, that this could possibly be more transmissible and uh, lead to a certain level of breakthrough from previous immunity. So far, the new variant has only been detected in South Africa, Botswana, a traveler to Hong Kong from South Africa. And now this new case from Malawi, the UK has also banned travel from six African nations. We want to emphasize there are no reported cases here in the US. And some Boston Market customers just outside of Los Angeles forced to change their Thanksgiving meal plans at the very last moment. Families arrived to find the store closed and a shocking sign on the door. It reads, no employees showed up today. We are unable to fulfill the orders. We are sorry. Another sign offered an alternative to buy food in another location. Customers showed up in disbelief with no idea what to do and with their families waiting for Thanksgiving meals. We didn't even receive a phone call, like say, hey, um, no, employees didn't show up, just um, you're going to get your money back or an email, anything. We didn't receive anything. We just came and nothing. So we have to figure out what are we going to do for dinner. A news station there in Los Angeles says they reached out to the Boston market. The company declined to comment. Last year, the increased holiday demand for shipping caused by the pandemic caught the U.S. Postal Service by surprise. USPS processed more than 1.1 billion gifts through the mail, which overwhelmed the system. But this year, postal carriers say they are ready for it. They are bringing on 40,000 seasonal oh. workers to help carry the extra load along with high-speed sorting machines. The Postal Service says the deadline for sending packages in time for Christmas, write it down, December 15th, for Christmas cards, that deadline is December 17th. So we know Mike Osterhage, he has the whole Christmas get up today. He Christmas. Good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys gotten your Christmas gifts yet? No, I actually just started a note in my phone okay. today saying Christmas list. And I have to do the check marks. Okay. And I'm excited to see what my gift is. Mike, okay. what about you? Is, is my name in there in your list? I, you know, for she you can't guys. ruin the surprise, Mike. Come on. <laughs> I didn't say yes. Would tell me what the gift mm. is, but is my name on the list? Oh, well, are you going to behave like naughty, <laughs> nice list? <laughs> Me? <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, see, you can all now start decked out with my Christmas tie and love it. stuff links and everything. And the like trees. That. Yeah. So the little pockets with trees. He's got Christmas little trees little, on his Yeah. Anyway. Um, the house is dead. Dad has got to, speaking of trees, got to put in my tree still. So. Oh, true. I'm surprised yeah. you haven't. No, not yet. Wow. Sarah still has we Halloween decorations up. Stop. We were still doing the Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, we still, you know, although outside there was Thanksgiving wreath surrounded by Christmas garland. Anyway, um, if you are putting up decorations today, uh, it's going to be a decent day for it. It is going to be on the chilly side. It's a really cool looking picture. I love, I mean, all the different elements and in the background, that beautiful sunrise. And then there's the gray sky on top of that. And all those birds just lined up almost perfectly spaced out on that traffic signal. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right.
Well, not much sunshine out there. You may see a couple of bright spots, I think, but it looks like this is pretty much going to be the call throughout the rest of today with all that uh, with the cloud cover out there. And we're not really going to see much of any sunshine probably until about Sunday. So wind out of the north at about 10. It was breezier this morning. It's going to pick up a little bit. We had some gusts about 20 miles per hour uh, earlier this morning, and that put wind chills way down there. We had some uh, low 30s for wind chills in the hill country. 43 is what it feels like here in town. 41 in Helotus and 52 right at Stinson as well as Pleasanton. So when temperatures are above 50, the wind chill formulas really don't come into play. But of course, you know, it's colder, it feels colder, even if uh, the math doesn't work out that way. All right, here's what the computer models are indicating. Again, lots of clouds around today, and then later on, nothing really going on. There may be computer models. You may see some that try to bring some rain in here. However, the air is so dry down here at the surface that if anything does fall, it is going to be evaporating. Now, once we get into the overnight hours, humidity is going to start to come back in here, more moisture down here at the surface and up into the atmosphere that lower layer so when with more rain sliding on in here a lot of it's going to be reaching the ground which means it's just going to be kind of a damp saturday we're going to have some showers throughout a good chunk of the day maybe a you know a decent uh, moderate shower here or there and again that's going to be going on pretty much all day long it'll start to uh, kind of taper off a little bit out there to the west and again it won't be raining constantly but it's just going to be one of those days so again if you do want to put up some outdoor decorations today's the better day for it or just wait till Sunday when you have a lot more uh, sunshine around here and some of these showers are even going to linger into the uh, overnight hours into early Sunday morning, but most should be out of here. And again, here's what's going on. We have dew points. Temperatures are up in the upper 40s. Dew points are down in the 20s. So there's a big difference as we call it the dew point depression, which means the air is really dry down here at the surface like I was talking about. And this is why uh, some of that rain would be evaporating before it ever reached the ground. And that's going to remain the situation through the rest of today. But then these numbers start to come up and there's not as much of a difference between temperature and dew points. So therefore, more humidity out there, and that's going to allow that rain to reach all the way down to the ground tomorrow. And yeah, like I said, it'll just be kind of a, a wet sort of a day. So good day to kind of stay in pajamas, hunker down tomorrow. 55 degrees today at noon, cloudy, and it is going to be on the breezy side. Limited, I mean, a couple of little brighter spots here and there, but basically just cloudy skies, breezy today. 59 for a high temperature. So we started off right about normal in the mid upper 40s this morning, but we're going to end up about 10 degrees below normal later on today, only in the 50s, mid 50s, if indeed we get up there tomorrow because of the uh, some of the rain around here and then some sunshine 66 on Sunday and going to get kind of warm next week up in the low to even kind of approaching mid 70s. It's so funny. We were supposed to run a turkey trot yesterday, but it rained. So I sent my buddies who live northeast, you know, the weather, and they're like, why is it 70 degrees there? <laughs> <laughs> so we are blessed, you know, 66 and sunny. I know Sarah likes it colder, and she likes the excuse to, would you say, hunker down? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But I'll be hunkering down today. Perfect weather for it. Time now, 919, 48 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA at 9. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be in broadcast media like Max and I, our Stefania Jimenez explains next in this week's Kids Want to Know segment. Hi, I'm Alicia Barrera, and this year I'm really thankful for one, for good health. Um, my family, specifically my parents, who will always support me in everything I do. I'm also really thankful for one of the biggest headaches in my life, and that's my new dog, Miki. My partner and I rescued Miki back in September or October. I don't know, it's all a blur. But he has definitely kept me on my toes, but also showed me a different side of myself. I think we all can be very thankful that the Dallas Cowboys are doing extremely well this season. Do I hear Super Bowl in the future? I think so. I want to wish you and your family a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you get to eat a lot of turkey and some tamales. Desperate to find the hottest holiday gifts? You may want to turn to shopping bots. The Wall Street Journal reports the controversial technology is now being used by parents trying to find popular toys. Shopping bots scan retail websites to see when sold out items are being restocked. Then they automatically place orders. Resellers have long used bots to find and flip in-demand items. But now bots like Snailbot 
are being used by parents for holiday shopping. Snailbot costs $99 a month and scours Walmart's and Amazon's website in search of items you select. The first step to using a bot often is to download the program. From there, you'll create a profile enter billing information, then connect the account to the retailers you want to shop at. You may have to enter some details on the items you're looking for, and then finally you run the task, telling the bot to start searching. But the use of bots has its downside. Some e-commerce sites could ban consumers found using them. So far that hasn't scared off shoppers desperate to get the hottest gifts. For more on shopping bots, check out the full story at thewallstreetjournal.com. Well, have you ever heard an interesting story or had good news and wanted to tell someone about it? Or have you ever wanted to see your face on TV? Well, one profession combines all of those things by sharing the stories of the world around us, all while becoming the face of a city or a news station. So, so in this week's KSAT Kids edition of Kids Want to Know, Nightbeat anchor Stefania Jimenez answers students' questions about journalism and what it's like to be a reporter. What should I do if I want to be a journalist? If you want to be a journalist, read, ask questions, be interested. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. And it's up to you when you talk to people, don't dismiss people. Something that they did, you know, that they did throughout their lives wound up getting them to the place where they are now where they're speaking to you. Always treat people well. That's really important when you're a journalist because you, there's no way that you could do your stories without speaking to people. Now, student led, kid certified learning. Yay! A reminder, you can find the full version of the story on ksat.com. Just look for it under the KSAT Kids section. All right, time now, 925, 49 degrees. That's still a lot more to come right here on GMSA at 9 a.m. Oh, Max, the Cowboys. Credit to you, though. I mean, you stayed up, you watched the game, you I even did. put it on in the car to travel. I mean, Sarah Costa with a, a traffic update and a little insider info. If you drive on Thanksgiving during a Cowboys game, no one on no Texas No one roads. is on the roads. Best day to travel. So that's the good news. The bad news is Cowboys getting another L on Thanksgiving. We have what happened, the excitement, and the roller coaster of emotions. But first, the Community for Life Foundation, a local nonprofit designed to help get local students to meet their full potential. Truly an amazing program, changing lives and families for generations to come. We are joined by the executive director on today's leading essay segment. everyone meteorologist Justin Horn here to tell you what I'm thankful for there's a lot to be thankful for but uh, my family obviously tops the list my two girls my wife so thankful to have them in my life and I'm thankful for working here at KSAT as, as cheesy as that sounds great place to work and I'm thankful too that COVID is starting to wind down a little bit and then we can get out and be around people again. That's, uh, that's pretty awesome. Hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. Good morning and welcome back. The Community for Life Foundation Scholarship has been helping local students reach their goals for 20 years. The nonprofit helps students with the cost of higher education and has given out over half a million dollars in scholarships. There have been 260 recipients here in San Antonio, but the nonprofit hopes to reach more students. That's why Lawrence Scott is the executive director of the nonprofit and a past recipient, and he joins us live this morning for our leading essay segment. Good morning, Dr. Scott. For those who don't know what the mission of Community Life or Foundation is, can you please explain it? Absolutely. First of all, uh, Sarah and Max, thank you for having me. Um, we are a 501c3 organization founded by Keith and Denise Graham. And our goal is basically to, to defray the high cost of higher education. So we want to help today's learners become tomorrow's leaders. So we've given over $700,000 to more than 327 recipients. We fed over 25,000 people in our Old Get Thanks initiative. Uh, we send care packages. We provide tutoring sessions annual career and college readiness sessions, and many of our scholarship recipients have become doctors, lawyers, teachers, administrators, executives, entrepreneurs, 
servicemen and women all pursuing their God-given potential because of the help from people like uh, our community in San Antonio. So how does the foundation process work? If you're a student, how can you apply? And if you're someone who's looking to help out, how can you do so? Absolutely. So uh, it starts in April. So April 2022, they can go to our website at www.cflfoundation.org and fill out an application. We have a general uh, undergraduate application as well as a graduate scholarship application. We have a 2.5 GPA, some of our simulations here, a short 250 word essay, and of course, letters of recommendation. And I hear you guys have a, an event coming up. Yes, ma'am. We are celebrating our 20th anniversary. Uh, we have a Community for Life Gala. It's going to be at the Colonnade, which is the uh, former Omni Colonnade, but it's the uh, Colonnade. We have R.C. Buford, the CEO of the San Antonio Spurs, is going to be there uh, joining us. We have comedian Michael Jr. We have, of course, our poet laureate, Andrea Vocab Sanderson. We have food, giveaways, fun, a DJ, music. Uh, we're trying to put fun back in funding, as our one of our founders, Demetrius Graham, says. I love your passion and your enthusiasm. Now, you've helped so many students here locally. And, you know, you and I have talked before this interview about where some of your students have ended up. Can you talk about some of the amazing success stories that you've seen personally? Yes, sir. Well, I'm actually a 2003 recipient of the scholarship. Uh, I took over in about 2011, but I'm actually a 2003 recipient. We have sons. We have a Bryson Graham, who's uh, the uh, New Orleans Pelicans assistant GM. We have an NFL coach. We have a Disney director, countless teachers and administrators and doctors. So, uh, again, uh, you know, we've averaged about $45,000 a year in scholarships. And our goal this year is to raise $100,000. So we're trying to partner up with more people so we can create more narratives of resilience and stories of success like us. You just said it. Uh, the goal this year is to raise $100,000. So how can people help out? Absolutely. They can go again to our website at www.cfl, not Canadian Football League, right? <laughs> but cflfoundation.org. And uh, we have a donate button there. Or you can come to our gala. It's going to be a fun atmosphere. And we're very excited. Uh, we're going to be celebrating 20 years. And hopefully uh, you'll, you'll see um, a couple of uh, dignitaries who have uh, some tables purchased by dignitaries uh, cutting a rug on the dance floor. So that, that would be fun all in itself. <laughs> all right, Dr. Scott, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We saw Brandon Logan on the, uh, the cover page. He's been on the show a couple of times, too. Absolutely. He is absolutely one of our, our scholarship recipients as well, as, as many others. All right, well, and he also, he also, he's also one of our donors as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you for your time. Anyone who wants to watch this interview or has any questions about how they can help out, we're going to have all that information. Just head to ksat.com. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A quick reminder, there is still time to donate a new pair of shoes to our Share the Shoes Drive. About 400 pairs of shoes have been donated so far, but there's an endless amount of children in need. You can drop off a new pair of shoes to any SAPD substation. We're looking for shoes of all sizes, for toddlers to teenagers. All the shoes donated will benefit the local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services next month. Just in time for the holidays, we're taking donations until November 30th. Now we want to get you an update on our progress for No Shave November. Max's beard is completely full and also... I'm no, 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 this guy. You're no this guy. Max. <laughs> Mike Osterhage might get to that. Maybe. Maybe. If, if he if holds he on until next year. <laughs> Different color. Uh, but thanks to the ge ge uh, generosity of our viewers, yeah. we are breaking records. Yeah, no, it is amazing. And, you know, it is the season of giving. And you guys have given so much, raising more than $13,000. Here's a look at the leaderboard. We made fun of Mike. What did you say, Mike? A call out to all the silver? Yeah, it's it's uh, Team Silver. I'm team Silver. That, that's there a sub go. team. There's Team KSAT, and then oh, okay. I'm, I'm putting out the call to all. Well, Team folks. Silver is doing a great job, Mike. You've raised more than $2,300. Mark Austin, more than $1,500, along with Stephen Cavazos, Justin Horn, David Sears. I'm bottom of the list, but hey. Okay, and I... Oh, we've okay. So we have a uh, Justin Horn. Here's his reason for participating. Hey there, everyone. Meteorologist Justin Horn here, talking about No Shave November. Such an important cause uh, to me and to, to a lot of people, and, and that's the reason we're growing out the beard. So you'll ask us why are you growing out the beard, and we can tell you why, and hopefully raise money along the way and raise awareness. We've done it for several years here at KSAT and I'm so glad we're continuing to do it. I know we say it all the time, but cancer affects everyone. We either know somebody who's had it or know somebody that, that cancer has affected them in some way. Me personally, 
my grandfather passed away from cancer. My mom had a brush with cancer, just lost a cousin to cancer. So it's an incredibly important cause to me. And I'm glad, I'm so glad that we're doing it here at KSAT again, uh, No Shave November. And I'm so appreciative to all the people that have already donated. And if you'd like to donate, please uh, feel free to do so. Uh, we're doing pretty well so far raising money and I hope we can raise quite a bit more. Cancer research and finding a cure for cancer is uh, would be incredible. And if we can help do that, uh, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So thank you again to, to all those who have donated and uh, we're gonna keep growing out these beards throughout the rest of November. So powerful, and he's right. You know, the, the least we can do is grow out a beard to get the message across. Uh, if you have any questions, if you wanna donate, just head to ksat.com slash no shave. You're gonna find a link to donate to Team KSAT, and we're gonna continue to share updates through the month of November. I do wanna, I do wanna give a shout out to Max Massey. Mm. He is in, what, fifth, sixth place? Six, I'm not even in top five. Okay, so <laughs> we have a couple of days left of November for any of those who haven't donated. Um, if you wanna donate, you can donate just to KSAT in general, which is mm. number two in the country right, right now for raising $13,000. Or you can donate under Max's name since Mike is. In I was first gonna place. say it doesn't really matter at this point. Mike's pretty much run home with it. You're you're on Max's. Oh, we gotta work with him on the weekend. I, I do have to work with him on the weekend, Mike. Sorry, right, Mike. You're doing just fine. <laughs> you know, to kind of, you know, to kind of adds what what Justin said. It, this is really twofold. You know, in in October, of course, breast cancer awareness, and you know, to remind women for to get mammograms and self exams and everything, but. Guys are not as, and you talk to the doctors, guys are not as forthcoming. They're, I'm fine. You know, or as proactive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. E exactly. And so, if, you know, to raise money is fantastic for, for all different uh, forms of that. But just, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. You don't got to be macho about it. Go to the doctor, get checked out, you know, blood test, things like that to help out. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It's not a big deal. All right, outside, uh, we have temperatures that are in the 40s and 50s right now. Grab a jacket before you head out there and lots of cloud cover. It's not going to warm up all that much. We have dew point down to 27, which is very significant because the air is really, really dry down here at the surface. So two things, it's not that damp chill this morning. We do have a little bit of a wind chill to deal with with winds out of the north, but also that's going to help out as far as not seeing anything as far as any rain even tonight as the rain chances start to approach. Speaking of wind chills, yep, here's what some of the numbers look like. We have a breeze. It's not as windy as what it was earlier this morning. We did have a wind gust up to about 20 earlier this morning. It is going to stay breezy throughout the day, though, and we've got these wind chills right now. Uh, 41 Bernie Stage, 43 here in town, and 44 up the road in New Braunfels, and a lot of cloud cover with all this moisture mid and upper levels of the atmosphere right now, and mold is on the, uh, the low side. We are going to be seeing um, just cloud Cheesy, cheesy, brilly, chilly, breezy, combine the two words, light showers and chilly tomorrow. So yeah, that's going to be that damp cold tomorrow. Then some sunshine mid 60s on Sunday and it's going to start to warm up next week. So feeling like November today, it won't feel like December when December gets here. That makes sense? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, Mike. Well, it was a Thanksgiving day with a tragic ending. An overnight shooting at a home on the city's east side leaves one man dead and two others injured. Jonathan Cotto joins us live from that scene. Jonathan, do we know who the suspect is? Good morning, Max, and that's an excellent question. That still remains unclear. Police are still trying to determine suspects and victims involved. They say it was an argument that started inside a home that ultimately led up to the shooting. But this is what we know. Police responding to the 6,000 block of Bear Branch. Now, that's on the city's east side around midnight. They say a man believed to be in his 40s was found shot dead, and there were two other adults with gunshot wounds also. Now, a woman who police say is in her late teens to early 20s, and a man in his mid to late 50s. What we understand is there was an argument. That argument escalated to uh, firearms being produced and gunfire, uh, a, a gun battle kind of ensuing. Now, police say detectives are talking to witnesses to learn exactly what led up to the gunfire and determine suspects and victims involved in this deadly gunfire. Now, both adults were taken to the hospital. The woman involved, she's said to be in critical condition. Now, this case remains under investigation, but police are saying witnesses are cooperating. Reporting from the city's east side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Jonathan. Time now, 941, 49 degrees out. You're watching GMSA at 9. Oh, we have so much to talk about in the sports world, whether it's Cowboys or an exciting college football weekend, especially for the Roadrunners. We have everything you need to know coming up next. Meet me. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Welcome back. If you are a Cowboys fan, you might just be waking up and it was a roller coaster of emotions. Let's see if we can roll the highlights. All right, so Dak Prescott and the Cowboys back on Thanksgiving. It is customary America's team. And I'll tell you what, the Raiders start off hot and heavy. Boom, Derek Carr finding the receiver and he'll pretty much just, you know, walk into the end zone. A little stylish. Yeah, Deshaun Jackson, long touchdown. All right, so it was back and forth for a while. Here we go. This is one of the best plays of the day. Tony Pollard taking it from like the four yard line and goes up the sideline. Is the kicker going to catch him? No, he's not. He's a kicker. Nothing but love for kickers. But Tony Pollard walks in 100 yard return. You got to love it. So it was a close game. Here we go. Dallas down in the fourth quarter and Dak Prescott engineering two touchdown drives. Get way for it because Dalton Schultz touchdown and quick out route gets a two point conversion too. 30 to 30. We are going to go to overtime because of that kick. There we go. Now we're going to overtime. 20 seconds left. Nothing else would happen. So we go to overtime. And I got to say, here we go. Neither team was great on third down. Long pass. Anthony Brown caught. Can't do that. You just can't do that. That is a detrimental play. P.I. sets up the field goal. And then here we go. Daniel Carlson kicked a 29-yard field goal in overtime. It was his, uh, it was Anthony Brown's fourth, fourth pass interference penalty. It kept him alive. So the Cowboys would fall 36 to 33, seven and four on the season. Still pretty good record though. Here we go from the pros to college. If you weren't a fan of yesterday's game for the Cowboys and you're a Longhorns fan, not much to be excited about this morning. The Longhorns. Not doing well. They are four and seven. Steve Sarkeesian, first year head coach, trying to figure things out. Remember, both quarterbacks dealing with injuries. B. John Robinson out for the year, but he did say he was coming back next year. They're coming off six losses in a row, taking on Kansas State this morning, 11 a.m. And the big guy to watch, if you're a Kansas State fan, Deuce Vaughn. He's actually from Round Rock, Texas. So far this year, he has run for 1,115 yards and 14 touchdowns. So if you can control the run game, if you can contain him, you could end up winning, and we'll see. They need more big wins, and they need big 12 wins, too. Here we go, from UT to UTSA. What a season for the UTSA Roadrunners. All right, big game this Saturday, 1 p.m., taking on UNT. It is on the road, but no matter what, they are hosting the Conference USA Championship game next week. I mean, come on. We talk about it week in and week out. Nothing but love for the Roadrunners. You want to give me one? Meep, meep. There we go. Perfect. Another team we love to talk about, the Spurs. We try to bring optimism here. UTSA has a lot of optimism. I'm super optimistic for the Spurs because. No. As long as one of our San Antonio teams is doing I, well. Huge Spurs fan, and they're young, they're energetic. They're on a, you know, a six-game losing streak, 4-13 and 13 right now. <sighs> but taking on the Celtics. Uh, 10 and 9 Celtics. Yeah. They're figuring out their defensive schemes. But our Spurs look good. Jakob is back. Mm -hmm. He had the, you know, the safety protocol and whatnot. DeJounte looks fantastic. Bryn's finding the three. You need to be on the, the Spurs coaching staff. I'm just get this hype man over I'm here. Just, that's it. I'll be like the Kevin Hart of the sidelines. It'll be great. I don't know. Max is a good hype man. But go Spurs, go. We wish you the Spurs the best. I hype up our own Mike Osterhead. Look at that outfit. He's Christmas ready. I'm, I'm all He's ready for Chris Christmas. Kringle. So And, you know, back to football, though, uh, arguably, you know, the biggest Rivalry, rivalry in, in all history, sports yeah. tomorrow, Michigan, Michigan, or Michigan, Ohio State, pardon me. Yep. I and thought you were talking about Michigan State, Penn State. I was like, oh. Determines who goes into uh, the, the playoff. Yeah, the right? college football playoff. Yeah. It's a big, big game. Big, big game. Who are you rooting so. for, Mike? Uh, Michigan, all the okay. way. So. You got the green on, too. Wrong Michigan school. No, wrong Michigan school. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. Thank you. For, <laughs> anyway, yeah, their only loss, of course, to the state. All right. Beautiful view. I love that picture. How majestic is that? Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Down here. Hmm. Yeah. It's beautiful. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. All right. Um, this is pretty much what it's going to look like all day long. Lots of clouds, cool temperatures, and notice how this computer model has a couple little sprinkles moving on in here. 
Yes, that is possible. However, the big question is, will it make it down to the ground? And the answer really is no, because we've got such dry air down here at the surface going up a few thousand feet. So as the rain falls into that dry air, it's going to be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. So it'll just be cloudy and cool. And then overnight tonight, as the humidity kind of comes up a little bit more here at the surface and we get more of this coverage and more of this rain coming in here. Yes, we will see uh, showers around tomorrow morning and pretty much throughout the day we're going to be seeing some of this uh, light to even a couple of moderate showers here and there that will taper off then tomorrow night and uh, then we'll have more of a uh, little bit more in the way of sunshine on Sunday around here and that's going to help to warm things up because today we stay in the upper 50s mid to upper 50s I mean it's going to be tough on a day like this to warm up tomorrow just mid 50s at best with the rainy conditions but then more sunshine is going to equal more or equate to more uh, in the way of warm temperatures getting up in the mid 60s. Humidity again starts to go up going into tomorrow. We get a little bit of a break and then it continues to go up and it's going to be warm going into next week. So here's what's going on. That low is still parked off to the west of us that um, we started watching this thing last week. We of course had the front move through yesterday and now this is going to which is continuing to pump in all the moisture. That's why we have the clouds around here and then finally it's going to move in here a little bit closer. Give us that chance for some rain and then sort of fizzle on out. That high builds in. That's going to dominate the weather going into next week. We warm up a little bit more. Then it looks like another low is going to try and develop out here to the west of us, throwing more moisture in by the middle part of the week. And then maybe also a couple of a uh, couple of showers, perhaps by Thursday or Friday of next week. So forecast today, it is definitely jacket weather, chilly, 55 degrees, cloudy, breezy today, and then 59 for a high temperature, which is going to be about 10 below normal tomorrow. Kind of a wet day. If you want to just hunker down tomorrow, it's going to be the day for it. Then we have more sunshine on Sunday. We're going to wrap things up coming up after this. Stick around. All right, good morning and welcome back. Happy Black Friday. Yesterday, Thanksgiving. We have we have leftovers here, but eating them through the morning. Oh my gosh, we have so much so many <laughs> plates of leftovers in our fridge here at KSAT. And Max Massey loves leftovers every break. Breakfast of champions. He was going okay. into the break room. Yeah. And Nothing he, but love. So he would agree with this survey where half Americans mm. think Thanksgiving leftovers are actually better than the meal. I disagree. I think the meal in itself is fantastic. We had a phenomenal Thanksgiving meal yesterday. It's not, it's never the same, but Mike Osage, you have a, a secret of transforming those leftovers into like a gourmet sandwich. Well, I mean, I like to put uh, some of the cranberry sauce on a sandwich. Maybe uh, I like turkey and you know, you can actually put some greens on it or sliced apples mm -hmm. or something like that. Ooh. Nuts. Stuffing. If you want to, and a little bit of stuffing, perhaps, and yeah. all that stuff, or throw it together wild rice. Some of the drippings make a soup out of it too. So. That was mind blowing. So, it's pretty good. And I that's think a good warm type people thing. like leftovers means you don't have to cook the rest of the week. That's true. Good point. Hey, thanks for Macy's. watching. Macy's. Happy Black Friday.